Coogan Cassis here for the Cassis and Herald Show with me. I've got a very sharp looking Frank Bullioni. How are you, Frank? Yeah, very well, thanks, Coogan. Yourself? All very well. Um, obviously, about five weeks and a bit uh, out from your uh, world title shot against uh, Fed or Chudinov. But um, just going back to a, a few weeks ago at Wembley, you had a job to do against uh, Castaneda and you've done it in emphatic fashion. And, you know, that, that part of it's over now. So you can fully focus on obviously your camp ahead of uh, the 26th of uh, September. Yeah, without a doubt, I think there was uh, probably more pressure um, fighting Castaneda than there will be um, fighting for the world title against Chudinov. Um, it was a, it was a fight that I couldn't couldn't afford any hiccups, couldn't afford any cuts, couldn't afford like to damage my hands. So it was, there was a lot of pressure on that fight, and um, everything from the camp was was great. Um, all the build up, all the preparation. So I know everything's working, and uh, it's just given me even more or even more confidence going into the uh, world title fight. I was speaking to you at the weigh-in, and your kind of your attitude to it was, you know, that's life. But I mean, going into that fight, there must have been some sort of thing at the back of your head that, you know, that you should have been fighting for a world title that night. But to get motivated um, for that particular fight was it difficult? Uh, no, not really. I kind of I, I see uh, Castaneda as, as my world title fight because without a win there and a good win, then my world title fight would have would have vanished. So. That's the way I look at it, and uh, to be honest, that mindset I'll take into every fight with me now. Hopefully, there will all be world title defenses, but if not, I'll still be fighting like they are world titles. I mean, you haven't been pro for that long, but I suppose it's the nature of the game, and it's, it's a cliche that these things in boxing happen. But until it happens to you, uh, you don't really know how it feels. But now, I suppose you may have to get used to these things as you progress in your career. That you know, obviously, things in boxing do happen like this. Yeah, of course, um, I think everything that's happened in my career has been has been great for me. Um, I've suffered the loss, I've suffered the draw, the the controversial draw. I've suffered like the the setbacks, the injuries, the illnesses. Uh, all these things they they make you a better fighter and they make you a better person. I think. Um, so you just got to roll with the punches, so to speak, and uh, keep moving forward. Obviously, your camp leading up to the original proposed date for uh, children of um, you're into camp now is anything changing regards to the 26th of September or is it just pretty much as it was but obviously you're preparing yourself you know for that date instead well I'll probably um, train even even harder because my body was was um, it adapted and it coped with uh, how hard we we pushed it and at least I know the levels I'm at and the, the amount of rounds I can do so um, I can just keep bringing in fresh sparring partners um, fellas that are paid to do a job and to try and knock me out and uh, that's that's what I want so we will step up and train even harder this time. So since the original fight was announced at that press conference in London uh, at the Landmark Hotel, the feeling you've got is that are you being written off do you feel? Hopefully Coogan, hopefully that's all I can say. Um, I, I'd say they're too professional and they're probably too clued up to, to, uh, to write me off and uh, I think it goes to show that, I mean, he, he had some sort of injury, whether it was a nose injury or what, or he just didn't feel prepared enough. If they uh, if they was underestimating, they would have stepped in on July 24th with or without an injury um, and took the fight. And they w it would have been wrong of them because they would have come right unstuck. But um, obviously, they, they're coming in fully prepared and that's what they need to be. I mean, fair play to Frank Warren. It was, you know, soon after your, your fight at Wembley Arena recently, uh, the date almost was announced uh, straight after your win. So, you know, they had a plan uh, in motion uh, that that would happen and it has happened relatively quickly. Yeah, well, obviously there was there was a lot of talks between my team and, and Frank Warren and uh, Chudinov's team about getting the date um, rescheduled. So that was in the back of my mind as well. But um, the, the people around me did a good job in kind of keeping that to one side, letting me focus on July 24th. And then, uh, obviously, announcing the date officially once I'd won the fight. When the original, obviously, pullout happened, did any part of you think that that's it? That your shot was gone? No, I, I kind of, uh, I, I respect uh, Chudinov and his camp, and um, I think when they when they say something, they're, they're people of their word. Um, so I, I had faith that the uh, the fight was going to be rescheduled, and uh, let's be fair, he's probably looking at an easy voluntary defence. So why why wouldn't he? Why wouldn't he take it? Obviously, um, someone who's waiting in the wings uh, is obviously Lee Markham. Obviously, he was scheduled uh, for the rematch with Lee Markham. And I'm sure at some point you'll 
in your opinion, want to put that 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 record right. But um, you know, he he's kind of playing the waiting game to see what's happened between you and Chudinov as well. Yeah, I mean, you you, you I said it before to you off camera. Um, you can't really be too worried about what everyone else is doing. Uh, I like Lee Markham, and my advice to to him would be: don't wait around. Just go and go and have fights, um, fight for other titles, and keep moving. And uh, don't rely on anyone else. Don't rely on other people. And um, that's certainly the attitude I take. I'll fight whoever's put in front of me, and uh, just keep grabbing the opportunities as and when they come. Bill has been labelled man versus machine. Are you happy to be man and him to be machine? Well, listen, machines go wrong, don't they, Coogan? Man always, uh, man conquers. Man uh, man rules machine. But um, nah, regardless, whatever they want to call it, however they want to bill it, they want to put man versus boy. I'm gladly be the boy. If they want to put David versus Goliath, it uh, doesn't matter to me. I'm going to get in there and do a job. And uh, my training, um, it will speak for itself on the night. Now, I've just recently learned about the Bullioni Boxing Academy, which sounds very interesting. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that, Frank? Yeah, well, you probably see that I've still got a little bit of a tan uh, on my Coogan. It's fading, but um, I've still got a little bit of uh, a tan there. I was uh, I was in the Forte Village um, a couple of weeks ago, and um, I was running the uh, the Bullioni Boxing Academy, and um, it's, it's it's a very good uh, it's a good good camp. So beginners and novices um, head over to the Forte Village. They get a holiday and they uh, they train alongside myself. Pascal Collins was there as well, and uh, we was kind of doing two hours every day just uh, beginning coaching and sort of stepping up the levels. But there was one girl there in particular, Kazakhstan girl. She was 14 years old and she could punch. So uh, she might be the next Golovkin. I mentioned that to Billy Joe. He's got his own views on uh, women in boxing also. But um, is this something, obviously, you're thinking about, I mean, you're, you're very early on in your career still, but, you know, post-boxing, is that something, sort of the, the training element, something that you'd like to get into? Obviously, you, you know, you're under the guidance of, um, some great trainers as it is, you know, Pascal, Steve Collins, etc. But is that something that you'd like to get into? Yeah, I think, well, boxing, you know, it's just, it's a, it's a love and a passion of mine. Um, so I think I'll always be involved. Um, but to be honest, I'm not looking too far into the future. Um, the opportunities such as the, uh, the Bullioni Boxing Academy in the Forte Village is kind of a, a thing on the side that I can do in between fights to keep my mind occupied. Um, but other than that, I'm just, I'm solely focused on uh, becoming a world champion and um, really sort of cementing my name in the uh, in the boxing history all right well listen frank thanks for talking to the cassis and held a show and like i said uh you're a bit elusive nowadays you're here there and everywhere so it's good to get you and um i'm sure i'll catch up with you obviously ahead of the 26th but um best of luck with your camp and uh you may have given me an idea for the coogan cassis academy i don't know if it's going to be boxing but it might so involve a film school a film school eh, Coogan? Could be. wrestling could be anything coogan you don't need any more competition there's plenty out there so uh i reckon you just keep that to yourself all right, Frank Bulliani, thanks for talking to us and we'll catch up with you soon. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Thank you.